Lord was with us in a real outstanding way. And uh, I was in a, I was out of the state before the uh, meeting, and I was on business, and I was able to have my wife with me. And uh, each time that we would be in service here, uh, we would uh, be set and eating. And uh, I told Kay, I said, well, they're having services right now. I wonder what's happening. And uh, I felt bad because it's uh, not good to be away in preparation for a service because uh, you have to gird up the loins of your mind and have your thoughts toward uh, what you can do to help people. And uh, my thoughts this uh, past few days has been on what Brother uh, Denny said, and that's uh, to allow the Lord to uh, work through us so that we can, he can work in this assembly and then uh, help other people, and so that his spirit can flow freely. And uh, I have always felt in the past to reach out and try to touch the Lord. And whenever I couldn't feel the Lord, then I would make my way immediately down front and ask Brother Mears uh, to pray for me because I would tell him that I would be uh, too carnal where I'd get the, uh, when I was younger, I would get the other young men with me and we'd go down front and ask the Lord to pray with us so that we could always uh, have a hold of the Lord. And I really, th I really am thankful for the way the Lord blessed during this meeting and that I was here and I was able to be uh, in that and feel it, what uh, happened here. Uh, the Lord is really going to do something great. He's going to do something wonderful, and I want to be a part of that. I really feel that, Brother Mears, and the only way that he can't do that, it, it would be because of our unbelief. He told his disciples that when they prayed for people and something didn't happen. He said it was because of your unbelief. When I was standing with my Uncle Ab and praying with him, I forgot to mention this, but uh, he was struggling with uh, the Lord being able to touch his body. And I said, Uncle Ab, I said, Jesus himself said that if you just have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that he would do that for you. Just believe it, just that much. Well, if we can believe just that much and extend on that, how much is going to happen? <laughs> you know, how great will these miracles be that he has in store for us? I tell you, it's outstanding. Look what he did in this meeting, you know? <laughs> and I am thankful for what I felt. And if you feel like I do, and you feel like that you're maybe interfering with the flow of the Lord here, as Brother Denny said, that energy that surges through this assembly. And I'm telling you, we all feel it. I know you do, because I have felt like flying at moments. The other night, we seen some brethren flying, literally around this church, because they felt the power of the, go uh, the Lord come on them, and they had to do something. And when they said they, when we were singing that song for, about being free, I believe, I told one of them after church, I said, I really believed that you were free. <laughs> they were really free in the Lord. But I really feel like Brother Mears uh, said and Sister Mears said, there's some great things ahead and I want to be a part of it. I do not want to be a dam in this assembly. Do you want to be a dam? Do you want to have uh, some problems or whatever it is to interfere with the flow uh, right out of heaven into this assembly. I don't want to be that way. The Lord dealt with me a few years ago. I think Brother Mears is in Nehemiah 4, wasn't it? About the rubbish on the wall and trying to get that wall built. And the Lord dealt with me about some things. I'm thankful the Lord deals with his people. And I really feel like if we're walking close to him, reading our Bibles and praying, and I'm not reading my Bible this year like I did uh, last year either. I have read through that Bible every year. I don't know how many years back, but I... I, Brother Mears, I always felt like that I, I, we can't give up. We, we can't give up an inch. You recede when you do that. And I, I was, I hate to use that word, I was, but I was real faithful not to recede, not even one inch. If I got in bed at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I had to read my scriptures. I just, there's something about me that I, ha I could not lay down on that bed at night unless I had read my Bible and I had talked to the Lord. And I've, I felt like that, I, what would be a good word? I compromised myself a little bit because I agreed with myself that I was a little bit tired and surely it wouldn't be uh, bad if I missed it tonight. But you know what? It is bad. And it is because it, you, you recede a little bit and you lose a little bit of strength. I don't want to lose a little bit of strength. I don't want to move to the right or to the left. I want to go straight, straight forward. And if there's any doubt in my mind, I want to ask the Lord, where is that path? As Brother Mears said Sunday, where is your way? You know, any way won't, won't do. It's got to be his way. And folks, if there's any doubt in your mind, make your way to the front. 
and ask God to touch your life again and to touch your, your spirit again so that you can stay close to his uh, presence so that he can lead you. You know, that's so important that we stay close to him. And if the Lord's dealing with your heart and something happens, you know, something happens and you have the wrong thought, then I just told myself, I, I'm carnal. And, and the next service, I'm going to make my way uh, down, and I'm going to have Brother Mears pray for me because I'm not where I should be. And I don't want to do anything. I love this assembly. I'll tell you, I love this assembly from the bottom of my heart. I've grown up in this assembly. I've got blood, sweat, and tears in this assembly. I've grown with Brother Mears and Sister Mears. I've travailed with them. And I've seen my mother travail for them. And we've sacrificed for this assembly. And this is the most precious thing in the world to me is this assembly. This is my life. And I know in this, if I stick with it, I know that I'll have eternal life. And I know that anything that's good and precious is in this assembly. And everything is associated with it. You know why? Because all of us collectively love the Lord. And there's somebody always praying and sacrificing and fasting and praying for this. And I thank God for this, this well of salvation that we have here. For the word of God that flows so freely. And I know that we have, if we have that faith, like uh, Jesus said, it was because of your unbelief, he told his disciples. It was because of your unbelief. Believe it. God's going to have a people today, and he from is heaven. going to have it. It's church. not from mankind. We can't afford to lose that. And I want to do my part that that will not be lost. Praise God. You know what? Sister Mir said that men have died. She went to meeting after meeting, and they sat on the platform. And she didn't want to see that. You know, she didn't want to see them leave. You know, I've grown up in this, too, and I've been accustomed to those faces. I didn't want to see them leave either. But you know what? They are leaving, and who's going to take their places? Are there faithful people today? I don't want to lose that. That's one thing I wanted to talk about. We don't want to lose that. Young men, let's get a hold of God and stay stable. And Elvie made a statement one time that really jolted my mind. She turned around to the young men, and she said, Stop being yo-yos. Stop being up one day and down the next. You get a hold of this and keep it in your heart. Don't make any compromise with the world. You don't have to. And like I said a while ago, we can't afford to give an inch. We can't recede. We got to keep forging forward. And we, when we lose these precious souls like Aunt Elvie and people that you and I have both gone to for prayer, you know why? Because we can depend on them. You know, that's another thing. God's people are going to be a people that can be depended on. We have to be faithful. I appreciate Brother Spinks. I told him over and over and over again. I appreciate him. I don't want, and Brother Koppel, when I, th I think back on San Gabriel Boulevard, the most beautiful thing I can ever remember is when Lord would touch him. You know, and he, and he had that movement where he just let go and he let the Lord freely touch him. He just let loose with that. I want to be the same simple way when I feel the Spirit of the Lord. I don't want to quench it. We need more and more of it. And we can't, we, can, we got to fill these places as, as these uh, men have gone off the scene. Who are we? Who is it that is going to be faithful enough to be able to carry on this word of God? Right. Uh, to try to get all of your attention right now, and uh, I want you to think about what if that were me up there? I want to give him my, all of my attention. And I believe uh, we had an illustration here just recently in one of our services. Uh, Brother Steve said he's, he doesn't mind letting Brother Mears know that he's hearing what he's saying. He's going to be a little rooting section. I appreciate these. I didn't know they was going to do that because I was going to ask you to do that. <laughs> that uh, in football, it's called butterflies. And uh, I don't know how the term originated because a butterfly doesn't do much damage. Now, what I'd like to do is get your attention upon uh, uh, the body of Christ and let's talk about it being a building. I'm a, I'm a contractor and, uh, and our part of the phase of construction is structural steel. And uh, we refer to uh, the AISC specs. And on uh, all the drawings on blueprints, uh, there's a guide. And, uh, of course, our, our blueprint originated in heaven with God. He started and, and he sent his son, Jesus, into the world. And uh, that architect, God the Father, isn't like a lot of architects in the world today that leave off dimensions and uh, they leave off uh, building codes. 
and uh, if you're welding they don't refer to certified welders or any specifications God has certain specs that we got to adhere to I want everybody to stand up I want you to take a real good look at this building look at those lights above us can you picture those lights in the walls Maybe the doors over here, instead of being where they're supposed to be, they're in the ceiling. You're supposed to come in and there's supposed to be pews here for you to sit in and somebody forgot them, they're not even here. Now this building had a set of drawings and Brother Mears made sure that those blueprints were followed. Everything you see in here was built and everything was put in its place according to the specifications that Brother Mears had. You are the people that make up this church. Would you substitute what God's laid down in his commandments for a building? That building wouldn't stand, would it? Every one of you have a qualification and spec to meet and that originated with God. Let's don't give anything less. What do you say to that? How about that? You are a part of the body of Christ. If you have the Holy Ghost, he puts you in his kingdom. I didn't do it. Brother Mirrors didn't do it. God did it himself. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord is always there. We have that confidence. And we can always know that when we go to the Lord in prayer, that he's always there to hear us. He knows exactly what we're going through at all times, even when we don't feel like it. The Lord is there, and I thank him for that. And I thank God that he's given us this avenue of prayer to call on him when we need it the most. We're living in a time where we really need the Lord, don't we? We need the mind of the Lord in everything that we do. And of course, we have been taught over the pulpit to always seek the mind and the will of the Lord, and we're living in a time when we need that more than ever. haven't seen the end of this yet. Let's all say it together. We haven't seen the end of this yet. That means there are still good and uh, special and wonderful and better things to come. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So I'm sure that there are other people that have re received touches in their body that yeah. we haven't even heard the report yet. How many have? Let me see. Anybody else that's been touched for something in your body or, uh, here, look, look at these hands. Praise God. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Brother Sonny, how is it with you? Stand up. You ought to stand up on that and say something. Stand up and say it. <laughs> Tonight at, uh, I don't know what time it was, <laughs> but it's been a week. We have had, I have had seven nights now and of course today's the seventh day, but it really began last Sunday afternoon, if you remember. Brother That's Peter, right. prayed for me about four times. That's right. This is marvelous. I think this, we'll see this continue on, and people here today will be spreading it abroad, Brother Mears, and this will continue right on, and the Lord will take us right into the latter rain. Yeah. This will be spread out all over the place. I tell you, I have been, you have never seen me like I have been. I have been telling everybody about it. My That's last it. testimony Wednesday night, I, I seen others Thursday and Friday, and I told them about it. I said, you have got to come where I've been going to church. I've been prayed for multitudes of times, but not like last Sunday. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I told a furniture man last, uh, last night about it. I said, you need to bring your wife and family here. He said, well, I live in Riverside. I said, we have people that live in Riverside, Moreno Valley, Rubido. I said, you come on anyway. I said, you have never met a people like this people or felt what I felt. I told him that, that God healed me, and he, he said, please tell me about it. 
So we sat down there and he had to listen while I told him the whole story. I told my controller about it uh, Friday. I told others there, I said, well, th I thought I've already told you about it. And they said, no, you haven't. I said, well, sit down and I'll tell you about it. I promised the Lord that and I am. Praise I'm God. I'm That's doing just it. exactly what you read about those in the uh, book of Acts that did. They went and spread it abroad to everybody. One of them, Jesus instructed him not to tell them because he knew what was going to happen. And he had to go into a desert place, but they came seeking him there. Praise God. You know what? It's a desert place out there, but they're going to be coming here. Amen. Tell everybody about it. Sister Debbie, tell your friends about it. Praise you God. You know what you experienced here today. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a, isn't it sweet? What yes. sweets over your soul? Amen. Brother Mears, I told somebody here today, yes. when the Lord touches your body for a particular healing, when the Holy Ghost touches you, it's not particular about what it touches. Your whole body. And you know, when you're in the spirit, what, what is it? You don't feel a pain, do you? No, no worries at all about this world or any pressures of life. That's because the Spirit of God's all over you. Can't you see that? He's wooing us, calling us to come to the holy place. Coming to this holy place. He's wooing us to do that. He's wooing us to come to Him. Praise God. And when we do that, and Sister Debbie, you tell people what you felt. You know what's so precious about that? That's an experience that it's between you and Jesus. Nobody can take that away from you. They've come too late to tell you it's not real you felt it in your heart hallelujah I had to tell you that today I promised the Lord that I would stand up and voice it to the congregation all the days that the Lord keeps me free of this headache praise God and I I told the doctor like I told you he said I told the doctor uh, and I finally got to talk to him Thursday and uh, I said I want a cat scan he said, please, he says, uh, I really feel like that I, I wouldn't want to have your head bombarded with all that radiation. I, you know, I never thought about that. But I says, but I want to see a CAT scan compared to the one August 1st because Dr. She, every single one of those uh, sinus cavities are going to be all black. It's going to be pure air through there. He said, listen, he says, Mr. Turrentine, I believe you. I believe what you're telling me, but I really don't want to bombard your head with that radiation. He said, I'll just cancel the surgery, and I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> isn't this wonderful? This is a revival. I told somebody today, you know what? It isn't just this past week. You stop and think about it. It's been this whole year year. I told Brother Lester, he said something about it last year in the beginning of this year, but Brother Mears, we have seen the Lord constantly touching us. He's leading us into something new. Praise God. I believe it's going to go on into the latter rain.